everyone and welcome to the Mash and Jerome Whiskey Room and What's on the Shelf Wednesday. In this series, I'll be doing quick reviews of whiskeys that you could find on the shelf, including bourbons, rye, Irish whiskeys, and scotch. So what's on the shelf today? Yellowstone Select Bourbon Whiskey. So this bourbon was created in 1872 by Taylor and Williams and named in honor of the famous national park. Now the Yellowstone brand has moved around from distillery to distillery since its creation. The current owner is Luxco. Now they make the popular brands like Rebel Yell and Blood Oath. Uh, they source the bourbon from other distillers in Kentucky. However, Luxco recently took a 50% stake in the Limestone Branch Distillery run by Steve and Paul Beam. Limestone Branch has a interest in the Yellowstone label as its owners, brothers Steve and Paul Beam, are descendants of both William Dant whose brother JB was the original distiller producing Yellowstone, and MC Beam, who ran another distillery that Dan ended up buying as part of the Yellowstone Empire. Both families were involved in producing the whiskey until 1944, when the brand was sold to Glenmore. So Yellowstone Select is a sourced whiskey made with a blend of four and seven year old Kentucky bourbons. Supposedly it's a higher rye blend, but no specifics on the mash bill are available. It's bottled at 93 proof and available for about 40 bucks. All right, so this is one of those bottles I've seen on the shelf, you know, a million times. They recently just changed their label from a beige, darker beige to this more of a white label, which definitely made it stand out a little bit more. All right, let's get a pour of this one. Now remember, only 93 proof, but uh, it piqued my interest when I saw that it's a high rye mash bill in here, because I do like high rye bourbons. So let's get on the nose and see what we got, guys. So first thing I get on the nose is a little honey, a little citrus, probably from that high rye mash bill in there. Definitely caramel and vanillas, but they're very light. They're not that dark at all. Being 93 proof, they're probably gonna come off a little bit lighter. Yeah, the honey and citrus is coming off really strong. A Little bit of oak in there. Gonna be a slight peanut characteristic too. Yeah, there's a hint of rye spice in here. You can definitely smell that this is a little bit of a higher rye. There's, there's some really good high rye bourbon characteristics in there. It's not overly sweet. Get some more air in there, see what we get. As you whip some air in there, you get a little bit more of like a smoked peanut characteristic. There's a little bit of an earthiness to it. But yeah, you can definitely smell the rye spice in here. So let's try it on the palate, see what we get guys. Cheers. Wow, this is so citrusy for me on the palate. This is, this is orange zest with, with caramel, all on the front of the palate. You definitely get a little hint of that rye spice there. Kind of works its way back. Gives you a little bit of a tingle of that rye spice in the back end. Not a lot though. Remember 93 proof, so it's not super complex here so far. Go for another sip. It's got a little hint of cherry in there. Definitely some, still that citrus note is really strong I'm getting. Definitely from that high rye. Vanillas, caramels, but again, it's very soft, it's very sweet. Yeah, there's not a lot going on in the front of the palate here. The, uh, all the flavors are, they're there, they're present, but they're going through a little bit too quick. Really the, the, the little bit of that spicy finish on it is what's kind of saving it you know, ever so slightly. Let's go for another sip. Yeah, this is brown sugars, a little bit of rye spice. There's a mintiness aspect too that's coming through a little bit to go along with that orange. A little bit of a mint characteristic, but not overly strong. There's just not enough going on in the front of the palate here for a $40 bourbon. Let's go for one last sip. Okay, so front of the palate, like I said, the caramel, the vanilla, the sweetness is there, but then it really kind of runs back to mid palate real quick. You get the cherry, you get the citrus, you get the, uh, the, the spice. Uh, and then the finish is, is a little bit more black pepper, a little more spice, and a little bit of that minty note comes in to play as well. Yeah, it's an easy sipper. I mean, I think it's a, it's a good solid bourbon, but there's just nothing going on in it that really makes it stick out compared to some other high rye bourbons that I love. All right, so for my final breakdown on this, for $40, I think this is a little overpriced for what it is. It's only 93 proof. There's not a lot of viscosity going on in this bottle. It's a nice, easy sipper. I think if you're... If you like Basil Hayden, which is a higher ride bourbon, uh, that's only 80 proof. If you're looking to try something a little bit higher proof and you like Basil Hayden, this might be a good step up for you. But the problem is, is that $40 price point. If you think about high ride bourbons that are available, Old Grandad Bonded, Old Grandad 114. You're looking at 1792 small batch. Um, even Wild Turkey 101, which is not super high rye, but there's enough 
interesting notes in there that is way more interesting than uh, the Yellowstone. So um, for me, I think this is a pass on this one. They do have some limited and special releases that are higher proof that I would like to try to hopefully, uh, maybe I'd like it a little bit better than this. But as far as the Yellowstone Select, I think for what you're getting in the glass and what you're getting in the bottle at $40, it's really not a great value. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching this episode of What's on the Shelf Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and find me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this one, what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you like it a little bit more than I did? And as I always say, it is not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on The Mash and Drum. Take care.